Hello guys, it's Shane Davis, 20-year comic book veteran I'm here with another beautiful, lovely, sometimes she will make me a sandwich, wife of mine, lie of my life, Yanzi Lin. And today we're here to talk about the uh, gatekeeping, gatekeepers gonna gatekeep on Kickstarter. So let's get into it. So we often go to Indiegogo with Starlight Cats, which is in fulfillment, and Glorious Rex is next. And some people were talking about within the CG community, within the Comics Gate community, why don't we just go to Kickstarter? This is a conversation that has been had. It is an interesting conversation that came up a lot more ever since Camilla Zhang, former comic outreach and director of the, you know, the whole publishing for comic division at Kickstarter. She was fired, she was fired from her job. And there's a conversation that came up so it's um interesting that after she has been fired for basically gatekeeping and keeping out too many profitable projects from Kickstarter, I mean, she quite literally cost Kickstarter millions of dollars. They decided that, oh, it's okay, we should hire more gatekeepers. So the new gatekeeper here in question is called Jamila. Camilla? Jamila? Uh, they all rhyme. I, it kind of seems like we're going to go down through what I think are seven gatekeepers at Kickstarter. Kind of a lot like the seven dwarves, you know, like maybe we'll have a little song with their names at the end of it. So here's the thing, though. I don't think Camilla was really let go or fired, whatever you want to call it, because of the way she was doing business. OK, she was uh, part of a union, Kickstarter union. And uh, when the shutdown happened, it was an excuse, like anything that we found out, the shutdown is a good excuse to downsize and get rid of things you don't want. And they kind of want to get rid of her. Now, some people said maybe, you know, Kickstarter was done with gatekeepers. Other people said, no, they hired her for her gatekeeping abilities. And I think this proves the theory that, yeah, it's 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 who's hiring these people who is the uh that's the shot caller and this is um just a a person executing the orders or or whatever now what's interesting in this is uh big news she's there we get it i think it was ethan van skyver said he was blocked i went and looked i was like who is this who is this uh jamala uh jamila uh I, who is this person in kickstarter i need to know i'm in crowdfunding i gotta know i wasn't blocked so i'm like they might like Starlight Cats. That was about three in the morning uh, yesterday or today. I, I don't know. And uh, a couple hours later, uh, that Star Wars girl says, everybody quick check. Check if you're blocked. And I'm like, no, I'm in the club. They like me. And then I went and looked and I was blocked like that. Second day on the job, first day on the job, whatever you want to call it. Her first order of business is go through and block a lot of people. Block a lot of people that happen to either have Indiegogo campaigns or maybe were vocal about a customer movement. Who knows? Who knows what this is about? But it seems a lot like I actually think it's a more radicalized version, possibly, than Camilla was. Well, we know that Ariana who took over Camilla's position, was the one that pretty much announced the hiring of Jamila. So there definitely is some level of endorsement from the higher ups to the, towards the hiring of this individual. Now, Jamila Rouser, you might be asking yourself, well, who is this Jamila Rouser? Well, she's actually a comic creator herself. She's a writer. Oh, Ooh, and look, here's a Kickstarter. I have a real issue with you. Okay, look, she's hired as new comics consultant, all right, for Kickstarter. She only managed to raise $16,000, which is fine, actually. If you manage to crack five figures on your first comic campaign, there's nothing to sneeze at. But it's a real issue when you have had this much press done for your one book. Uh, press, 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 coverage, 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 coverage. Right. That's a lot of coverage to only get $16,000. And I think that is actually a reflection of her abilities to promote comics so i'm not sure why she's exactly a well comic the, consultant. I'm the ability to get in the ear of the shill media to get the woke media out there to pump some articles about your kickstarter how brave and bold this book is get on put your order in today uh that type of advertisement whereas some of us uh in crowdfunding are turning to youtube turning to actually talking to our customers now, what's interesting here is uh, her first day on the job is kind of the opposite. It's about blocking customers. Well, I wasn't blocked, but apparently she has gone private now. So um, second day on the job and she had to lock down her account. 
So what is, how does she do customer interaction anymore even? Because it looks like less than 7,000 people will be able to see her tweets now at this point. Mm. So yeah, no, maybe not even 7,000 because only approved followers can see her tweets. So obviously maybe using a blockchain or personally going in and blocking everybody in the world because she has the power. Now, um, this, this person has had, how did they get the job? What was the one thing that said her resume looks good? Maybe it's not her resume. Maybe it's more how vocal she's on certain issues. Now, this issue, issue here, we talked about that, I believe, is on the, about Thought Bubble, that UK con, where Frank Miller was rather unceremoniously disinvited from it because what it seems like what his book, Holy Terror, was triggering to a certain Muslim creator. So they decided to take the side of that creator. And then the creator, after they got rid of Frank Miller, the irony here is then that creator decides not to go to the con, even after yeah. they, they publicly execute Frank Miller. They publicly canceled Frank Miller, okay, in, in, in the world's eye. And then for the one person that they, 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 they took him out of the con and drug him through the streets on Twitter, um, they're like, I didn't even want to go anyway. I am. It's too complicated for me to go now. It's like, you were never going to go. And maybe you were going to go, but nobody was going to care that you were there. Some people were going to care to to have Frank Miller sign some books that meant a lot to them. And you took that. Now, what happens on Twitter, if you don't know, is like uh, right think is going to right think. Uh, they're they're going to woke is going to be woke. They, look, she had to pick this up and get loud with it. And mm. uh, there you go. This is what she says. All festivals slash cons need to think twice about who they invite as special guests. A quick Google search will let you know if a pers if that person is a bigot and will make your event unsafe for others. You create this DNI, which is diversity and inclusion policies, but don't do the bare minimum to uphold them. All right, so a quick Google search can tell you if someone is a bigot. Um, okay, so if you Google Frank Miller, he you, someone shows up that he's a bigot. Um, yeah. Right. No, so, no, she doesn't. She's being a little, she means look online, period. She doesn't mean Google. And uh, they want to be able to dictate who they say can and cannot go to cons. If ah. you've done anything ever and, and you're able to be canceled, this is the type of people that, that reach with like things out for this type of power. Uh, and, 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 and they absolutely have no power until somebody gives in. And then once you give in, they, they're like level like eleven power. Like they're they're blown through the meter. Like yes, it's so as in yeah. This is her newest power. She's the comic consultant for Kickstarter, which means that she can apparently go around and blocking everyone that she didn't like. Because if you or look at Or she could just call anyone a bigot at any given point in time on her Twitter feed and uh you're there it must be true. I mean, look at it. See, I guess because Anna was blocked, so when people start replying to Anna's tweet, like, for example, this individual here says, I'm not yet. And 23 minutes later, oops, they were blocked. Jamila was there at her phone, quickly hitting block on anyone who responded to Anna, I believe. Yeah, so it's a pretty long thread. And see, the trouble with blockchaining, when you blockchain all these people, you mass block them. When you blockchain individuals, this is what happens. So there's this individual here, Craig, who has from the looks of it, absolutely no leanings whatsoever with any comic book or any Kickstarter, any relations at all, basically. Hmm. And his response to it is, hey, Kickstarter, why has your new comic consultant blocked me? I don't even know who she is, nor do I know anything about comics. I don't care particularly, but I'm curious to know what's with all the hit. So it's and like, wow. So this guy, as he himself said, he has no relations to comics whatsoever, and he just got wrapped up in it. So this is what happens with blockchains. And a lot of people outside the comic community you know this, but it's often forgotten. There's a big community, whether it's in gaming or tabletop gaming or video games even or toys or bicycles, safes, whatever. These are just platforms to crowdfund products, period. So when a person that works for the company starts blockchaining a bunch of people, uh, they're a representative of the company that's blocking people from any product that Kickstarter maybe is is dealing with, or you're on the blacklist. Do you still want to purchase from this platform anymore? This becomes an interesting dilemma. Not only is she having this issue with just randomly blocking people, if you decide to question her, 
like this person, individual here, asking any statement on why you're blocking creators and thousands of their followers, this is going to cost Kickstarter millions in the long run. A perfectly logical question to ask. Mm -hmm. And that's the result. They get now, uh, obviously, I'm thinking from his name, Half-Assed Gaming, that he's probably from the gaming community. And he's just curious because he's probably invested in a lot of the you know, crowdfunders for tabletop gaming, which is huge in Kickstarter. And he's just kind of curious as a representative. He doesn't really care about the comic community, I don't think. But he's just curious in general in your boop block. Now, what does this person do with their money after this? Did they still back campaigns on Kickstarter? You know, I did have they get seen some individuals actually come out and delete their Kickstarter account over this because they're like, well, obviously you don't want my business, right? You're just randomly blocking me. You are a new consultant for this company and somehow the first thing you do is block me. I guess my business isn't welcome. So where your business is welcome is the BAM, Indiegogo, uh, Inglorious Rex coming out next. We're hoping to launch this in a couple of weeks. Fulfillment Starlight Cats is underway. So if you bought uh, Starlight Cats, thank you very much. You'll stay tuned. Look for your tracking number coming to you hopefully soon. And uh, I'll leave you guys with the trailer for Inglorious Rex only on Indiegogo. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, pardon me in my tone. You can't step to my throne. They ain't working like me. I did this on my own. You ask him where we been. I don't know where to begin. All this dirt on my skin. I just came here to win. I'm more than a man, I'm a monster. Somebody come past the doctor. So now I'm coming for the whole roster It's not a game, why you playing with me? You can double back, lose track, try and hang with me It must be in my veins Something you can't tame Cause I break the chains Can't control me